There's a gentle rain outside. It's a good time to focus your attention inside. You may have noticed that there are times when you sit and meditate. It doesn't take too long for there to be pain someplace in the body. And then it becomes the issue for the rest of the hour. But you can sit and watch a movie for a couple hours, and whatever pains there may be in sitting in that single position don't really impinge on the mind at all. So what's going on? Well, one, you have nothing else to distract you. You don't have to follow the story of the movie. And so you create a story out of the pain. And it's a story you tell yourself and you pass on from moment to moment to moment. Now sometimes this is a useful habit. Say you have a pain in your spine. And you know if you move the body in a particular way, it's going to aggravate the pain. So there's some place in your nervous system that keeps reminding you, don't move it that way. But here, as you're sitting still, and all you have to do is breathe and sit still, that habit runs rampant. There's a pain here, and you keep reminding yourself there's a pain. It might be in the, around the pelvis, in the knee. Then there may be another pain someplace else, another pain someplace else. And you tie them all together, and before you know it, you've wound yourself up with all elastic bands of pain. So there are several ways of attacking this. One is looking at what images you hold in mind, what perceptions you hold in mind that carry the message of the pain from one moment to the next. Learn how to question those perceptions. So the pain being right here or being connected to this other spot over there. Does pain have a shape? as we were discussing this afternoon, it's not identical with any of the elements, yet it seems to be that the pain and the body become one. So you have to take that perception apart. Tell yourself, okay, that's a wrong perception. The pain is one thing. Earth, water, wind, fire, these are other things. It's all too easy to get them glommed together, especially when you glom the pain with the earth element. It all seems very solid. If you climb it with the wind element, you then become afraid that it's going to flow wherever the, the breath energies in the body may flow. So you start tightening up around it to put a shield around the pain to prevent that. Well, the shield is not necessary. What's necessary is that you learn how to question that perception that identifies the pain with the element. Focus on the fact that pain has certain characteristics and the element has other characteristics. They're not the same. Or you can bring in the perception of a knife, cutting through all those elastic bands. At the same time, cutting through whatever narrative you may be telling yourself about the pain. How long it's been here, how much longer you're going to be meditating. Just think of a knife cutting through those thoughts. Be very careful about what messages you're sending from one moment to the next. This is why the Buddha talks about our duties with regard to pain and the causes of pain. Wherever there's pain, the Buddha says, comprehend it. Ultimately, that duty applies to the, the suffering of the four 
noble truths like we chanted just now, the suffering that's caused by craving, the suffering that is the clinging. But here again, this gets glommed together with all kinds of things. So you've got to tease it out, which is the physical pain, which is the mental pain that comes from clinging to a particular perception of the pain. Now to see these things requires that you have some place in the body where you can stay still with a sense of at least relative well-being. Which is why if you find yourself trying to analyze the pain and things just get worse, you pull out. It's like learning Thai boxing. The first thing they teach you is how to retreat from your opponent without exposing your, your flanks. So learn how to retreat from the pain into a place where you can use the breath to give right to a sense of well-being. So make that your perception. And then think of that well-being being prior to the pain. All too often the pain seems to have established itself, laid claim to different parts of the body. And then we try to breathe through or around it, whatever little spaces it leaves us. Breathing through is not so bad, but feeling that we have to avoid the pain to get the breath to go through. That puts more and more constrictions on the breath. Keep reminding yourself, breath is prior. In fact, all the elements are prior to the pain. Send those messages from one moment to the next. Wherever the pain seems to latch on and take hold of the body in different places. Remember, the, the breath was already there, and it's still there. And it can still move in comfortable ways. So what you're trying to do is dissolve those perceptions away, these messages that the mind sends to itself from one minute to the next, to the next, to the next, one moment to the next, to the next. Make sure you just build up more and more webs in this web of pain. Trying to cut through, cut through, cut through whatever is connecting up of a negative way. And again, change your focus so that you're focused on the fact that the breath is there and it's prior. And it should be able to flow right through. And if it doesn't seem like it's flowing right through, then there's something wrong with your perception. This way, when you approach pain as an interesting puzzle to figure out. We learn an awful lot about the mind, how the mind talks to itself, how it creates a lot of suffering in the way it talks to itself, and the perceptions that it uses to send messages. All the different aggregates get involved in the pain. And if you learn how to tease them out, you've learned a lot. Because they are separate things. There's a passage where Sarabhuta says it's hard to find feelings and perceptions and thought fabrications without one another. But they are separate things. So where's the feeling? Where's the perception? Where's the thought fabrication? And you'll find, as the Buddha said, that all these aggregates are potentials. And it's a question of how you shape those potentials into an actual feeling or an actual perception or an actual thought construct. That's going to determine whether the mind suffers around this or not. And be willing to ask some strange questions about those perceptions. Because as I noted today, a lot of our perceptions around pain and how we should react to pain came from when we were young and knew nothing about language. And so they seem to be built into our bodily memory of how you should respond to pain. And the bodily memory 
because it's inarticulate, kind of some really strange ideas. By asking strange questions, you'd learn to ferret out those ideas, bring them to the light of day, where they just shrivel up. It's like those ghostly creatures that can exist only in the dark. As soon as you shine a light on them, they shrivel up. So learn to ask questions about your pain, your pains. At the very least, the fact that you're asking questions shows that you're not just sitting there being a target or being a victim. You're getting started on that duty which is to comprehend it. Use your concentration as a foundation for looking into these things, so you're not without some sort of protection, some sort of basis. And you find that the duties of the Four Noble Truths get clearer and clearer. and you get better and better at performing them. <laughs>